As we all know, the countdown to the solar eclipse continues tonight. We've been talking a lot about the total solar eclipse, and you will hear even more as we get closer to April 8th. What we all should know is that none of us should stare at the sun without certified eclipse glasses. This is especially important for our little ones, our, our young people that we love so much. And joining me live in studio to discuss this is Dr. James Reynolds. He is a professor and chair at the Ross Eye Institute, and he specializes in pediatric ophthalmology. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. It's a real pleasure for me to be here, and this is a subject that uh, we all should care very much about. The eclipse is something that is going to be once in a lifetime for us. It's amazing for Buffalo, but we want to be better safe than sorry. You're right about that. So why is it so important that people wear those glasses that you have right there in front of you? Yes, and I want to put these glasses on. Maybe I'll put them on for this Go answer. Go right for it. Go right for so, it. These are certified glasses, and at this moment, I can see absolutely nothing. I'm looking at a very, very bright light in this studio and seeing absolutely nothing. Oh. Let me put it in perspective with some numbers. A typical office space has about 400 lux of light illuminance. So the number is, and units are relatively irrelevant. But the sun, rather than 400 lux in an office, the sun is putting out 130,000 lux. So the sun is very, very dangerous because light is necessary for vision, but too much light can cause a serious photochemical reaction that can scar the retina and lead to legal blindness and the loss of driving, etc. So it's very important to view the eclipse in space special ways. Let's talk about our children. As today we were talking a little bit about this earlier, schools are going to be closed and you have a little bit of a concern about that. Why is that when it comes to young children and the total solar eclipse? I do have a concern. Schools are very organized, scripted, and I envision the schools having uh, eclipse events. But now that the schools are going to be closed, something we have to be concerned about those children. I tried these glasses on my three and a half year old grandchild and they were here, they were here, they were here, you know, they were everywhere. When I held them, he didn't even like that experience. So there are indirect ways and the Buffalo Museum of Science has a beautiful website that talks about their indirect ways of viewing the sun. And I suggest that no pre-K child even be asked or entreated to view the sun directly, even through these glasses. I think they should do indirect viewing. School-aged children, I think, can enjoy this, but they should be supervised and they should have the proper gear. The only proper gear are these certified glasses a welder's helmet with a level 14 filter would be acceptable, mm. but children can also use these indirect methods. They're not looking directly at the sun, but they're looking really at the sun's reflection on a box through a pinhole. There are different methods, and again, I would suggest checking out the Buffalo Museum of Science website. This is excellent information for parents who are out there watching and listening right now. now just to be crystal clear, if a person, young or old, by any chance happens to look up, can you explain briefly what could happen to them? Yes, I can. So we're all used to typical levels of lighting, and many of us want more lighting, especially as you get older and reading, but we've all glanced at the sun. What happens when you glance at the sun? You take a glance, which I did this morning on a bright sunny day, and you immediately look away. You cannot even look at the sun for one full second. Your aversion reflex is just so strong. But as that sun begins to be covered, the light levels go down, the aversion reflex is negated, but there's still a huge amount of sun. If we cover 90% of the sun, that's still 13,000 lux coming at your retinas, and that can produce a photochemical reaction in your photoreceptors. So we're talking about we, don't, we want to avoid blindness. We want to avoid blindness. That's yeah. right. And we're going to have more from you, Dr. Reynolds, I'm sure, as we get closer to April 8th. We want to thank you so much for coming on the 530 today. This is Dr. James Reynolds, professor and chair at the Ross Eye Institute. You see what he has on? Everybody <laughs> needs to have those for April 8th. Thank you so much. Thank you. A real pleasure. Really, it really is.